Okay, hopefully, if you can see the slides, that's great. If you can't, you will be able to follow along um, just by listening to the discussion. This is not a, not a slides. Um, there was just an introduction slide to tell you who we all are, and then a big picture slide about the different use cases. But they'll be posted in a Hyperledger um, global forum after our session, so you can download them from there if you're missing them right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Thanks, everybody, for joining this. Okay. Uh, my name is Mary Hall. I'm Senior Director of Product Marketing at CypherTrace. Um, we're coming together today to talk about how blockchain has been a catalyst for transformation. It has helped bring transparency and fairness to different societal goals through technology. And today, I want to ask each of our speakers to say, share some of the use cases that they have worked on to, to show how this has been accomplished. So I'm going to go around our panel and ask each person to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit what, about what they do at their company. And we'll start with Lucia. Thank you, Mary, and, and thank you for the invitation to participate. My name is Lucia, and I am engagement lead and innovation lead at Lagchain. And just to give a brief explanation, Lagchain is an initiative that is born from the IDB Lab, and we are a blockchain infrastructure, public permission uh, blockchain networks. Uh, and we have up to date 100 nodes deployed on the network and more than 50 projects. So more than happy to speak about uh, the projects and the use cases on top of our network. Great. go next. Yes, sure. Um, thank you, Mary. My name is Jana Powell. I'm an executive director of strategic initiatives at Consensus. Um, I've been at Consensus for three years now. It's one of the largest uh, pure play blockchain companies. Um, and I'm excited, uh, excited to join everyone. Thank you. And Vijay. Hi, um, my name is Vijay Krishnamurti, and I'm, I'm at Oracle. Vision Tech at Oracle, and, and, uh, which includes uh, blockchain, and uh, I do uh, product management for emerging tech products. Very happy to be here uh, at this panel and looking forward to sharing our experiences. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and kick it off. And the first thing I wanted to ask you all about was supply chain. That's definitely one of the biggest uses for blockchain technology for tracking and tracing goods as supply chains become more and more complex. You know, we actually still see people using paper-based processes and not having everything digitized yet. Um, Lucia, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about the agribusiness consortium that you've worked at on at Lockchain and how it has been managed with supply chain. Of course, uh, in Lockchain, we, we do think we are the network for inclusion. So we work with a small uh, agriculture and farmers and with different cooperatives around the Latin America and the Caribbean. We have hosted different traceability projects on the supply chain and on the value chain of our product from its harvest, where it has been manufactured, uh, how it has been transported and where it has been distributed. This is very important for certain goods. We work, for example, with coffee, with sugar or with alpaca wool. But now we're also starting to work with the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine. So all this traceability of the supply chain is very, very important. And we want to assure uh, the transparency and the security that blockchain uh, gives us. So nowadays we're working uh, in different aspects because depending on the good, the information introduced into blockchain will be different. For example, uh, for agriculture and farmers, uh, it's very important the size and the quality of the land, but maybe for vaccines is more important the way of transporting the good. So depending on the on the value chain and on the product, the process are different. But in the end, the traceability is very, very important. And, and we are more happy to host all these projects and have them on top of our network. Hey, thanks for sharing that. PJ, could you tell us a little bit about some of the Oracle use cases for supply chain and sustainability? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know one of the uh, one of the engagements that we have done at Oracle that I want to highlight 
retraced uh, engagement. Retraced is a platform that supports businesses on their goal to supply chain visibility. Um, you know, their goal is to provide transparency and sustainability by uh, having complete visibility on the uh, entire supply chain. And they use Oracle blockchain along with other Oracle or offerings, including autonomous database, uh, to collect data from different points of the supply chain so that they could provide um, full uh, visibility to customers. So uh, one of the use cases that we say is different than the one I am highlighting the Kano shoes. Uh, it's one of the, Kano is one of the Mexico-based designer who actually designs leather oven Wawra chess. It's one of those um, uh, very traditional design uh, shoe uh, that targets to deliver socially and ecologically sustainable product. And they use a uh, retraced platform to uh, keep track of the source of material, as well as the working conditions and the types of craft features that have gone into the product uh, and the skills that have gone into making that product. So it actually provides the complete visibility to the buyer. So from the buyer's perspective, they actually know where the product is coming from and uh, it provides um, sufficient uh, satisfaction of learning the in the right way uh, for them. So um, there's a lot of those use cases that retailers they've done. I just want to uh, you know, point out one of them in this, uh, in this panel and, and the audience at the retrace uh, website to learn more. Thanks, VJ. I own a pair of Canna shoes, and um, they're fabulous shoes. And I love that the dye is organic, and I can check that on a mobile app and make sure. And I know who made the shoes, so it's it's very cool. And now I want to turn to Jana for a minute um, to talk about the work Consensus did with blockchain for hurricane relief. Can you share a little bit about that story with us? Yes, uh, absolutely, Mary. I, I love these social impact use cases. They're they're just so inspirational. And Consensus has done a ton of projects, some of them public, some of them not public. So I'll just share share this one. Um, so the, the project was called Project Unblocked. And that was a blockchain uh, project for humanitarian cash transfers, a cash and voucher assistance uh, humanitarian solution, which enables more speed and efficiency and, and transparency and financial aid for disaster relief. Um, and so the focus island was Vanuatu. Uh, and like many Pacific islands, it's vulnerable to extreme weather events. And in that time, that's when you actually need to get aid to people right away. They can't be going to the bank, getting a voucher, waiting for money. Uh, and usually uh, it takes, you know, at least one or two days uh, to get relief in, in, the traditional, uh, in the traditional way of doing it. So the problem solved was how can NGOs develop ca a cash and voucher assistant program that connects cash with vulnerable people instantly. So we worked, uh, Consensus worked with Oxfam, which is a nonprofit company. They engaged Sempo and Consensus to uh, uh, launch this project. It was a pilot built on the Ethereum blockchain uh, mainnet. And what it did was it connected disaster victims to cash aid much, much faster than the traditional mechanism through pre-funded voucher cards. And uh, what that also did was it provided real-time visibility and transparency into the flow of funds. And that also helped prevent fraud. Yeah, it's a perfect solution for getting aid to people quickly, you know, in time of disaster because blockchain is real-time delivery of exactly. information and payments, you know, which we did not see in the traditional financial system. Um, Lucia, I want to turn it back to you since, you know, John mentioned the transfer of aid and relief. You've seen in your work with blockchain about transfer of cross-border payments and working with payments to help mm -hmm. disadvantaged people. Yes, we recently published a POC, a paper on a technical paper on the project we did with City Innovation Labs, where we we created a project of cross-border payments with tokenized money. We tokenized the US dollars, fiat money, and we transferred them to the bank in Republica Dominicana and they received uh, pesos dominicanos, which is the money uh, in that country. So the idea is to enable the cross-border payments through blockchain technology uh, to reduce costs, to make the transactions more secure and more transparent, and of course has, have a traceability 
the of the money. It is very important for use cases such as, for example, remittances and many other uh, international payment transactions that uh, individuals or companies or even uh, entities, uh, financial entities, have to make uh, through this technology. Yeah, it's pretty important. I mean, it also eliminates third parties, right? And um, other excess charges when you take that middleman out and you're just going um, peer to peer. Um, did you see that there was some savings there with the system you developed? Did you, did you, uh, sorry, did you direct the question to me or to Bayi? Oh, um, to um, you directly, and then Sorry. if John wants to sh chime in about it, this technology that was used. So is it for Jonah? <laughs> it, it's I, um, for I'm, you, I'm, and then if she wants to chime in. Oh, after you. Yeah, I would say I'm not, I'm not personally familiar with the technology that was used in the Lackchain uh, use case, so it's if you want to provide those details. No, don't it's worry. I can't. I can't. Yeah, that's right. We used Hyperledger Vesu technology based on Ethereum protocol, uh, but therefore uh, with consensus. And and I mean, the experience was great. And we are now also publishing a quantum safe project also on Vesu and on Ethereum protocol. So, I mean, we are more happy with the work we are developing with consensus. It has been a great technological partner. And in this case, a specific case of cross border payments, the results of the POC were incredible and uh, CD Bank as one of the actors uh, I mean the results were exceptional and the KPIs were accomplished so uh, I have to say that the work consensus has always been uh, excellent in, in this uh, yeah, while we are talking about somewhere attacks you have been working on that and would love to hear your thoughts on that yeah, if, in case you didn't hear her, her mic dropped out a little bit. Um, she's asking me to talk about the work with financial institutions that Cypher Trace is doing um, to help prevent ransomware attacks, cyber attacks, fraud, theft. Um, so Cypher Trace is um, developed um, software as a service for doing investigative work and due diligence and preventing, not only detecting when there's been suspicious activity in the transfer of money or cryptocurrency, but also being able to proactively help financial institutions, crypto exchanges and government entities to take action so that when they pinpoint some suspicious activity, they can actually take steps to present or prevent um, something drop dire happening or hacks taking place. Um, so um, we were in an article this week in the Wall Street Journal talking a little bit about this since it's such a hot topic right now um, with you know ransomware and the colonial pipeline and yes they did pay the ransom but uh, then they were able to use forensic tools later to trace tra trace down who the hackers were. So it's another cool use of blockchain technology because with blockchain, you can drill down and get a lot more information um, about these activities than you would ordinarily be able to do. Okay, so um, John, I want to ask you to talk a little bit more about the work Consensus has been doing in the social sector. Some sure, of the other absolutely, groups. absolutely, Mary. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we're doing some work in carbon offsets. Um, I'm not at liberty to say a lot more at the moment, but uh, suffice it to say, we're uh, we're helping to increase transparency and quality around carbon offsets, and we're excited to be doing the work with really great partners. 
Um, another project that Consensus has engaged on is Project I2I, and that was an enterprise Ethereum payment network uh, to drive financial inclusion in the Philippines through more accessible and more efficient domestic transactions. And you may or may not know that 70 million Filipinos have severely limited access to both the domestic and global financial ecosystem. And that can be very, very difficult for people who are sending payments uh, globally or inter internationally to their uh, to their families, or or getting payments uh, from their families internationally. It's it's very expensive. Um, so operating outside of the banking system hampers upward mobility, long term opportunities. It perpetuates poverty. Um, so Project I to I. Uh, it was a platform that worked to connect rural banks as well as national commercial banks to the Philippine Central Bank, uh, helping those remote banks integrate with the domestic financial system while also improving banking access for local citizens. So I thought that was a, a pretty exciting uh, initiative. It is. And it, you know, it it's got to be empowering people too. Um, to use probably blockchain apps and mobile apps to transfer money and, and save money on fees that way, I would think. Right, and now you look at what's happening with El Salvador where everybody's essentially banking themselves through their through their mobile phone with Bitcoin. So it's, right. uh, it's all evolving. Right, right. That was big news today about El Salvador going to accept Bitcoin as currency. Yeah. Um, um, Lucia, I wanted to turn back to you and talk about, you know, the work with blockchain again. Mm -hmm. um, do all of the members have access to mobile devices, smartphones? Um, are they able to access the technology and um, do transfers and payments that way? Is that something you've been involved in? This is one of the challenges we found in the agribusiness consortium. We work with small farmers that are normally based on rural areas. So it's difficult sometimes to find the, you know, the, all the actors in the value chain and enable them with the smartphones, Wi-Fi, and all the required technology to be able to work with a blockchain. So yes, it's a challenge we've uh, had because as I said, we work with inclusion. So sometimes uh, our, our impact is on rural areas and it's difficult to find the over there, you know, the, uh, the adequate uh, technological infrastructure. So we did have this challenge, but I think we, we were able to manage and to finally, uh, you know, work, work with them in order to, to enable them with this uh, kind of, of materials. But also going back to the cross-border payments, it's also important to have blockchain, you know, to have financial inclusion, as Jonah was saying. And one of the reasons of these non-bankerized people is that they are very far away from the physical um, bank uh, representations. So the technology can help this gap uh, between unbanked people and banked people through technology because there are more people in Latin America with smartphones than with a bank account. So there's a very close relationship between impact and, and well, financial inclusion and technology. And we think we are an enabler of, of these connections. Very good. And can you talk a little bit about the work of um, with identity and verifying digital identity? Yeah, of course, one of the main stacks, the technological stacks of blockchain is digital identity. We are working in different projects uh, regarding this, this item. For example, in Buenos Aires, we are working with DD projects and we are um, issuing digital identity from the government of Argentina uh, to, a, to a neighborhood which is informal and they don't have any kind of identification. So this digital identity through blockchain technology enables them to have access uh, to financial services and to land registry, which is very important uh, for them because they, don't, they couldn't even register their own lands in, uh, you know, in the public administration. And we are also working with different uh, digital identity projects, for example, issuance of uh, employment certificates, issuance of academic certificates, uh, which enable people to work and to access uh, you know, better quality jobs thanks to, to this technology. Very good. I mean, it's really transformative um, for people who are unbanked in underdeveloped areas and enabling them to use the technology that they have at hand through their phones mm -hmm. 
is really a win for everybody. Um, VJ, I wanted to ask you, why do you think the blockchain technology serves the purpose of social good? What is it about this technology that's so useful? Yeah, I think the you know blockchain technology is actually perfectly fitting into a lot of uh, socially good uh, um, challenge uh, challenges, right? Because when you look at socially good problems, um, generally there are a lot of uh, participants um, who needs to provide data or gain access to data or report their activities. Like if you take a, the fashion um, uh, supply chain where a designer and a manufacturer and the material sourcer as well as the buyer they all have to come together to really have complete visibility into all the data uh, so that they all trust the information and gain um, you know confidence that what they kind of product similarly if you look at every single socially good problem you have you know, individual participants bringing some information and gaining a lot from that network. And uh, blockchain offers um, an opportunity for everyone to report their data, and uh, and in such a way that it is uh, it is it generates trust because you cannot just manipulate data as the time goes on. You know, it is it's once it's recorded, it's recorded forever, and also authenticated uh, based on the individuals identity so that everyone knows who posted the data and what kind of data is posted and it's chronologically ordered so you know for any problem you can actually trace back all the way to the beginning to see how the data is interconnected and how it is um, uh, provided and and uh, depending on the governance of the network the power can be shared across the participants so that everybody feels that the, this network belongs to them for them to maintain its authenticity and to provide the a value participants. So if you take fashion um, uh, uh, blockchain or honey uh, blockchain or even internet content uh, blockchain, there are some you know startups working on that. If you see, you know the creator uh, as well as the consumer both feel empowered uh, with the data that they see, the data the data they provide, and also the, uh, the fact that they are able to um, uh, gain at the same time give. Uh, to this entire community. So I think blockchain actually, is, as a technology, it has really created an opportunity for, for us to create a network where we can create an, um, you know, a scalable uh, trust um, and privacy inclusive uh, data collection and sharing. And that's the uniqueness about, uh, about, uh, about the technology for it to really revolutionize the majority of this across. I think a few other important points too are the you know the audit trail that's left. Yeah. You know, it's to, if if someone tampers with it, you're going to know about it if you're on the blockchain. Um, you're going to see who the bad actors are, and they're going to be exposed. And uh, you know, in the work that we're doing at CyberTrace. Um, we are able to um, drill down on that level of data. So it's a very important use of the tech. Um, sorry, I had an interruption there on the line. Um, I want to conclude by asking each of you to talk a little bit about um, what the future is for the company and what is going on um, in the future use cases for blockchain. I'm, I'm happy to uh, give a perspective on... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I didn't realize you were speaking, DJ. No, no, go ahead, yeah, Jonathan. I think uh, I think there is a very very bright future. There's a very bright future for blockchain in general. There's a there's a bright future for Ethereum. 
we're focused um we're, we're laser focused on uh, l2s and on programmatic enablement uh of new uh enabling technologies such as DeFi. we're looking at nfts we're looking at traditional finance so we're looking at disrupting traditional finance we're looking at uh working with uh, crypto institutions we're looking at expanding our consumer segment uh bringing a lot of consumers over to uh, our metamask product um, and all of that, I think, has implications for social good. Um, you know, the more decentralized we can make the world, the better it's going to be for uh, for every citizen in the world. Yeah, I I, I completely agree with uh, uh, Jana because I think this technology it's actually emerging. Right? It's the early. It's in the um, you know closer to the early phase of the uh, uh, technology compared to uh, many of the see so many promising application of this technology for socially good solutions if you look at um, you know even covid vaccine uh, you know track uh, tracking tracking and tracing covid vaccine there has been huge effort in actually utilizing um, um, you know utilizing a blockchain for uh, uh, for that purpose and there has been a lot of homeless um, uh, population uh, focused um, support you know even oracle at oracle an implementation where we enable homeless people who doesn't have who don't usually have the identities how can we use blockchain to provide the identity so that they could take advantage of all of the state um, and city level services they could uh, they could benefit from so i see a lot of promise uh, for this mainly because i think it it um, by decentralizing it actually provides um, uh, opportunity for a lot of creative uh, people to come together to solve uh, uh, solve a problem that is beneficial to uh, many. At Oracle, we are doing a lot of um, engagements with supply chain uh, customers who are wanting to get complete visibility into supply chain, and then using that using that kind of a setup to create a uh, create a positively competitive environment for every player in the supply to uh, benefit everyone. Uh, in the supply chain, so um, in, 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 when you lack, um, you know, visibility into uh, into times, you don't know whether someone is winning much more than the other. But in this case, there's a lot of effort uh, um, effort uh, going on about how to how do we come up with the well managed, competitive, dynamics focused supply chain. So there's a lot of work that we are doing. Um, I I do expect the next few years is going to be a very positive uh, one for uh, blockchain based deployments. We have one minute left. I want to turn it over to Lucia to talk Thank about what's ahead for blockchain. Thank you, Mary. And just to end very briefly, uh, we think that blockchain, as, as my colleagues were saying, has a huge benefit for underbanked people, for informal people, homeless people to issue identity, to issue them uh, tools to improve their lives. So we do believe in this technology and we are moving forward from the ADB lab in, in the building of this infrastructure and creating a better community around blockchain development. And we believe in a blockchain technology for enterprises. And, and we do believe on, on this technology. So just to end, thank you all. And I hope we continue in another moment uh, speaking about that. Yeah. Thank you all thank for you. your participation. This concludes today's session. Um, the session will be available for replay and the slides will be available through Hyperledger. Thank you.